Following the biggest wild card of the season that we've had in 2020, we're going to have the biggest wild card of an off season regarding personnel on oh, every man. team in America with guys deciding whether they're going to move on or whether they're going to stick around. So, of course, considering De'Ara King's options, have you seen any NFL prospectus or scouting reports on De'Ara King and, and how viable he is in the next NFL draft? No, I haven't, you know, and I think that his viability honestly is going to be at a position other than quarterback. I just, you know, I, I, I just don't think that um, he's viewed at the same level of a Baker Mayfield or a Kyler Murray and things like that. And I don't necessarily think that he's that kind of player, even though he's very good. And I love having the King as my quarterback and all those things. But if you're looking forward to the, you know, national football league and things like that, I just don't see it. Uh, at quarterback for him. So, I mean, if you want to go to Canada, if you want to try to do something else, uh, arena or whatever else there is to do, um, you know, then, hey, that's that that's something. But in terms of the NFL, I think that, uh, you know, along the lines of an Antoine Randall L, who was similarly sized coming out of uh, Indiana, but he wasn't even as thickly built as Derek King and anything like that. I think that, yeah, you know, you're, I think that the real viability for him is at a position other than quarterback moving. Queen City G to conclude tonight. Uh, Cam, what are the chances we lose Rhett Lashley after the season? Vanderbilt was mentioned, but I don't th think he would take that job. I don't. I think it's going to take a job better than Vanderbilt to get Rhett Lashley away from Miami, to be perfectly honest. And if you follow me, and look, if you read my Why I Became a Hurricane that I wrote five, six years ago on State of You Now, so it's been up on the internet for a good long time, you know, coming from Cranbrook, yes, that private school from 8 Mile, yes, I'm from Detroit, I went to Cranbrook, I don't have anything right near me that I can put up that it will show you that I went to Cranbrook, I was looking at my coffee table here to see if I had anything, but I don't, but I went there, and my number one school from uh, as a private school for uh, college out of Cranbrook was Vanderbilt, that's where I wanted to go, I know, I, you know, trust me. I'm fully integrated with that and everything. It's an institution that I still care for. Never ne having never been to Nashville a day in my life, I was ready to sign up and go there. I'm 100% in with that. So it's not that I'm talking down about the institution or anything like that, but in terms of it being a football program, it, it's going you're going to have to you're going to have to come stronger than that to get Red Lashley away from Miami, I think. You know what I mean? It's just even for a head coaching spot, that's a step down, honestly. Because if you're at Miami, now let, now let me, I know Mark's thinking, okay, that has to be at least laterally, because of the promotion. But for me, if you're at Miami in a, at, as the offensive coordinator, right? And again, Miami has struggled on offense for so long that the offensive coordinator spot now has a spotlight on it. If you come to Miami and you do well here, you cannot name your it, – it's, it's not name your school, not name any school, but you have such a higher platform from which to jump to a job that you want than going to Vanderbilt, and you're just going to get your doors blown off all the time. you know. And think about Wake Forest. How long did it take Dave Doran – to get, uh, not Dave Doran, Clawson. Dave Clawson, excuse yep. me, you know, to get to where they are. It took a lot of time, and that was there were some bad years that they let him work through in a, you know, in the ACC. So uh, fine, fine, you're going to lose to Florida State because you know you get there at the end of their run, you're going to lose to Clemson. Fine, cool, 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 cool. But we're going to start building from the ground up. Who in the SEC, you know, in the SEC East? Tennessee, South Carolina, Missouri, maybe, you know, like who, who are you, Kentucky? Who are you really going to be getting on par level with and then passing? You know what I mean? And then picking off of Florida or Georgia annually and then splitting your AC or your SEC Wests yearly. That's your ceiling. That's your absolute ceiling at Vanderbilt. And how long are you going to have to slog through the mud to get the roster to where you want to be and get the systems and everything to where you need to be to even do that? Those are the other things that are depressing Vanderbilt as a football job from the other side. 
So for me, yeah, I think you got to come. You got to come stronger than Vanderbilt to get Rhett Lashley up off of this job because with what he's done and hopefully with some continuity moving forward next year. And hey, if Derek King says, look, I want another year in college. I know that I'm going to go to the league and be a slash player, wide receiver, running back, slot, whatever. But I want to try to win as many games as I can in college before I do. And you get De'Ara King back next year and you're Rhett Lashley. Oh, no, no. You got you to come way stronger than Vanderbilt to get him up off of this job, I think. Yeah, Vanderbilt is basically a group of five or a, an American conference job in the SEC. So, and, and even not and not the top of that conference either, though. Okay, I'll take that. I'll, I'll agree with that. It's not current Memphis, Cincinnati. No, it's not. It's I don't know Tulane. I guess if Tulane played in the SEC East, they'd probably do about as well as Vanderbilt. They'd get killed most of the time. Another private school in a metropolitan city. That's a really good comparison. Nice. So for me, if I was Red Lashley or I was just anybody who's had an upward trajectory to my career and I was being wooed by Vanderbilt, I would have to be, they would have to prove to me that I could go there and be Northwestern Stanford Wake Forest of the SEC and they would give me enough to where I could turn it into a winner because there's nothing wrong with being Stanford, Northwestern, or Wake Forest. They're all pretty viable to different Stanford. Degrees. I think Stanford's the outlier from those. I think Stanford's a better program than the others, you know, but also you're going to have to give them the time. Stanford. You know what they I mean? Have. Because yeah, right. They, I mean, okay. Yeah, no, they're in the in past. A they have been. Yes, they, they have been, they've a, been a top five team in the country. Rose bowl. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, even if they're a top, 30 team in the country. I think that they're a better program than those other ones. You know, like Northwestern, Pat Fitzgerald's been there a long time. How long does it take? No, no, no. But what I'm saying is how long is it taking to get to this point? Do you yeah. have, are you going to let that time span happen at Vanderbilt? And across that time span, are you going to continue to take progressional steps forward? Because it might not be a mother, may I take three gigantic leaps. It might be mother, may I take, can I take a microscopic step this year? And you be okay with that and then come back next year for hopefully a microscopic or a small step. And then a small and another small and a small and a me. And so I'm already five years down the line and you're talking two microscopic, three microscopic steps and two small steps forward. And you gotta be okay with that and continue to forge a path forward with supporting this administration, with it supporting that staff and everything that they're doing. It is not easy, you know what I mean? And you have to really be all in on that. You really do. And I just don't think that I don't think that Vanderbilt's there with it. I think that they're perfectly fine being in the SEC. You get those checks and everything. You know, you get a Keyshawn Vaughn uh, every once in a blue moon. You know, he catches lightning in a bottle. You win a couple games here and there. You know, you might have a game on uh, ESPN National at noon where he does well against Kentucky and then you know you get the 330 ESPN 2 game the next week and you have a decent showing for 47 49 minutes against Florida and then okay the wheels fall off or something but like it's a long path and you have to be in it for all of the trials travails along that path you know and that's for me where the show them thing for Rhett Lashley. I need a six or seven year contract and the faith in me over the course of time to kick this ball down the road where we're not making another or making a, a knee jerk reaction move. And I don't think that they made a knee, knee jerk reaction move with Derek Mason. Derek Mason was there for a while, had a couple peaks. It wasn't super high, but you know, it, but then all of a sudden it falls back and like, if you could have sustained the modicum of success that you had and continued there for a while and then moved forward, a la a Northwestern, we're having a different conversation. But yeah, for Rhett Lashley, I'm just not sure. No, I'm, I, again, just today, I, I feel fairly confident that you got to come a little stronger uh, to be able to get him up off this job. Yeah. In uh, following up on the Derek Mason firing the other day, I see where Northwestern, as a comparison, just 
spent two hundred and sixty million dollars on a football facility. So yeah. they care about football. It's not yeah. paramount. It's not all win at all costs. They're still an academic place, but they care. They try to win. Man, it's right there on Lake Michigan. Like I applied at Northwestern, man. Like that's a it's a beautiful facility. It's a wonderful school, you know. Like there's a lot. I mean, it's Northwestern. You know what I mean? But, yeah, they put that kind of money into football. It's a beautiful thing. Look up their facility. It's overlooking Lake Michigan up there in Evanston. It's, ah, ah, great. It's wonderful. But, like, are you going to put that or similar in Vanderbilt? You know, are you going, again, to say we're going to trust in your path? So even if we're not necessarily seeing the result in terms of wins and losses, the progress there – The interior development, things like that, along that path, we're going to continue to rock with you through this because, you know, they call them growing pains for a reason. Everybody remembers, hey, I was short, you know, I got these pains in my knees and that was my bones growing, you know, and then I got taller through puberty. Like it's it's a painful process. Growth is a painful process, you know, but you have to be there to stick it out through that. Are you are you in for that? Are you not? Are you all in on the paradigm that I'm going to bring you? Or are you going to be like Michigan and say, yeah, I want Rich Rodriguez's offense, but I'm not going to run a 3-3-5 defense. I'm not going to bring in the special teams. We're not going to do everything. We just want that one thing. Is that good enough? You know, there, there's a lot with it. And you brought up the date, the name Dave Clawson. Man, I like that guy. I think he's good. I don't yeah. know how long they're going to be able to keep him around. Me either, honestly, but I mean, he's a proven program builder, you know, maybe not overnight, but what they got going is definitely better than what they had. Uh, that's for darn sure. But I mean, I think that there's several guys across the nation who are in similar boats. You know, you got the Matt Campbell up at Iowa State. Um, I'm all in. And I know that it slipped back a little bit this year and things, but I am all in on PJ Fleck, man. I just, I'm, I'm buying what he's selling. Honestly, like just the, the I like it. <laughs> I, I, you know, and honestly, like the thing that had really not concerned me, but like I was very interested last year to see, you know, if Florida State was going to try to get him up off of uh, Minnesota to come on down because, like, yes, that again, like I'm talking about is a holistic mindset mentality. You got to buy, if you want the on-field, that means you got to have the, the slogans, the, the, the everything <laughs> that's a part of that program. You got to be all in on, man. But I'm all in on P.J. Fleck, man. I just think that he's, yeah, I think he's good. I didn't know what to think of the guy when he first hit the national scene. Of course, he leads Western Michigan, too. And again, when a guy takes over Western Michigan and they're 1-11, in 11, and then a yep. couple years later, they're 14-1, and one and they're playing Wisconsin within a score in the Cotton Bowl, <laughs> that's, mm-hmm. a, that's a turnaround. And then, of course, Minnesota, they've taken a little step back this year, but I'm not that concerned about it. They go 11-2 and two and finish in the top 10 last year. And, and I was never necessarily that sold. I wanted to see, is this guy authentic? And, and I heard from enough Minnesota beat writers and people that were sold that would talk to the guy on a regular basis. I've seen the Big Ten documentaries, you know, following him around and the whole deal. And he's, yeah. he's more humble than you would think he is. It's right. just, he's just a ball of energy. He is, <laughs> he is him. You know what I mean? And like, there's something to be said for that. Like, I just... You know, if, if you're going to buy a paradigm, if you're going to go all in on a holistic kind of program thing, you could do much worse in my estimation than PJ Flight. 